Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. Make sure that you like and subscribe, and definitely make sure you ask questions in the comments or my email address. So recently I was traveling and I was on the highway and I was looking around at all of the vehicles that are out there and I started thinking about the Tesla Cybertruck and I started wondering if there isn't another really amazing thing that they could do with effectively the same body more or less and create a uh, work van out of it. It would be something along the lines of the Ford E250 or E350, the O'Connell liner. Uh, they kind of stopped manufacturing them except for just the front ends of those. But anyway, they're very, very popular vans and they are used all the time. Mercedes makes Sprint vans. They're just, there's a lot of these in the kind of smaller van area and I started thinking man the Cybertruck is really really well designed for this so actually I spent a couple of hours fiddling around and I ended up making a CG render of uh, what I think of as a potential cyber van type of idea I think it's kind of cool looking it looks a little like a Fisher Price thing but honestly so does the Cybertruck right <laughs> so I don't know it's, it's a very strange thing let's just start by thinking about what would be the use case of this so why would you expend all this time and energy and so forth to make another version of car, right? Or utility truck or something like that. Uh, there is a lot of reason to use it. There are tons and tons of delivery vehicles, right? You've got Amazon, you've got UPS, you've got FedEx, you've got DHL, you've got, I'm sure in other countries, many, many other car, uh, delivery um, companies. And those all tend to use relatively small trucks that they can go the last mile for to deliver the items to your doorstep. So that's a really good use for it. There's also, of course, workers. People think about pickup trucks for construction workers and so forth, but many construction workers use vans. House painters do. Uh, people who do tree cutting oftentimes use a, a van instead of a pickup truck. So there's a lot of other people that use that. Light movers, if you're trying to move a relatively small amount of items, you would also potentially use a truck like that. Uh, shuttles to hotels or to airports, etc. Those are also a really good reason. And just imagine with the self-driving cap capability, how weird it would be to have a shuttle that would drive you from the airport to the hotel without a person involved. So <laughs> it seems like an actual perfect use case for it because it's just an exact path that it has to traverse over and over again. And you would cut out a very expensive aspect of that, which is having the human being driving it if you just had the actual van itself. So, okay, so why would this be a reasonable thing for Tesla to think about? The main reason why is because they've got this, if they've got a factory and they're building an exoskeleton out of more or less one piece of 30X stainless steel, whatever the mystery X is, but anyway, whatever they're building it out of, if they've got this stamping machine and they've got the cutting machine and they've got this all built already and they've got an exoskeleton built, it seems like it would not be that challenging to go from an exoskeleton that was the Cybertruck to increasing the size of it to create the van shape instead. Now, you know, I <laughs> I don't know all the specifications of the Cybertruck at this point. I don't know exactly what the weight is. And I do know that stainless steel is a very heavy material. And so therefore adding as much more stainless steel as you know I'm looking at for this van could potentially make the weight so heavy that it would be difficult to justify it. But I don't think so because you're really not adding all that much more weight. You're kind of building up the sides, but the top I'll get to in a little while, but <laughs> I have another idea for the top. But anyway, I think that it wouldn't add that much weight and that this is a perfect use case for this and something that would be relatively easy for Tesla, even in the same factory, to kind of side by side build these things. Essentially, you would need to stretch out the wheelbase a little bit to make it longer and you would need to increase the height and square it off. And that would create your, you know, cyber van kind of shape. Uh, again, like I said, it kind of looks a little Fisher pricey because it's very angular, but that's also kind of the 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 what they're going for with it. So I don't think that's too big of a deal. Okay, so one of the things you could think about is the fact that you could have autonomous driving with a lot of this. You could definitely have autonomous delivery, again, assuming that regulators catch up with all of this stuff. You could have autonomous delivery where essentially this thing could drive someplace and could stop and could tell you that it was there and you could go out and pick up the package. You know, maybe there's like a little thing inside, like a little safe that like opens up just for you or something. Um, Additionally, if you had something else where you had 
potentially multiple people in a van that were doing loading and unloading and moving and so forth, you could potentially pay fewer people because you could have autonomous driving. The biggest use case for this, I think, would be in a kind of shuttle van situation. So again, an airport van or a hotel van or something like that. If you picked up people, not only would you not have to pay the driver, but you could even actually fit another seat in there or possibly two. So you could have more people on the van and you could shuttle it back and forth and only be paying for the mileage on the van and not paying for a human being involved. So that would cut down a cost that's a very real cost to hotels, airports, etc., etc. Another aspect of this is that the cyber truck right now and the potential cyber van would be very, very tough. It's made out of stainless steel that's unpainted and therefore it can kind of stand up to anything, right? And if, assuming the glass actually becomes the kind of bulletproof glass that they have uh, and doesn't shatter like it did on the de original demo, then the whole thing is kind of this really heavy duty exoskeleton. And if you look at old delivery vans or old paint trucks or things like that, they just look like they've gotten the crud beat out of them. So, you know, that kind of a aspect of the truck would actually be quite useful that it would have a tougher aspect to it than a lot of what's going on today, especially because you're not painting it. So you're not worrying about chipping the paint. You're not worrying about flaking off things. You're not worrying about scratches. You're not worrying about dents, etc. So this is a very good commercial truck. Of course, people could complain that this thing is not a terribly aerodynamic shape, and that's true, and maybe what Tesla would do instead of my version is they would angle the back down a little bit, or they create some sort of a spoiler on the back to allow a little better airflow. But if you think about it, most of these last mile delivery vans tend to drive in a more urban environment. So they tend to go, maybe they'll go, you know, 55 miles an hour, but it might only be for a couple of miles, and then they'll be back in an urban environment. And if you're going 30 miles an hour or 50 kilometers an hour or something, it's just not that big a deal whether you have an aerodynamic shape or not. So it's really not that big of a problem if it's not the most efficient shape in the world. It's more important to have the utility in this case. So, you know, I, I think that that's something that they would have to deal with and they would have to deal with the fact that the shape wasn't exactly what it would be if it was a perfect wing shape or something. But again, because of the use of these types of vans, I think the sacrifice is not going to be that big considering what you could get out of it. Also think about the fact that Tesla has reputed to have a million mile battery someday. They're going to announce at their Tesla battery day event at some point. So if you have a van like this, that's got a super tough exoskeleton, bulletproof glass, a million mile battery. If you look at the Ford E250 and E350, and you look at the average amount of miles that people get out of those trucks, they're somewhere in the 250,000 to 300,000 mile range, which isn't bad. But if you could quadruple that, even if you had to drop twice as much on the truck originally, it would save you a ton of money over time, right? And I don't think this would have to cost that much more than the top end uh, cyber truck, which is, I think, right around 70,000 US dollars at this point. So, you know, so let's say it was like 70,000 and it only had two motors instead of three, but it had a bigger battery pack. And, and you know, the E250 or E350 was in the $50,000 range. So yes, it could end up costing more at, at first, but it would make up over time a great deal of that cost. So the total cost of ownership would go down. The other huge thing about it is that one of the biggest wear and tears on a vehicle like that is the stopping and starting. So if you think about a, a gas motor, every time you turn it off and turn it back on again, there's a whole bunch of mechanical parts that have to start moving and they're getting to be, you know, they're friction and there's all sorts of nasty things that are happening. And with an electric motor vehicle, you just get in and you push the gas pedal and you start going, well, <laughs> the accelerator pedal, and you start going. So there's no turning the motors on and off. There's none of this wear. Literally, the only thing you'd have to worry about with a million mile battery is the tires and the brakes. That's about it. Everything else should be good to go for years and years and years. So that's a huge thing for a commercial entity, if you think about that. One of the other interesting aspects of this, if you think about delivery, is that you've got all these large companies like Amazon or FedEx or so forth, and those guys are able to achieve an economy of scale, which puts small businesses very much on the rear foot. So I'm kind of thinking some creative person, and I want a finder's fee if you do this, <laughs> just a little one, but some creative person should buy a fleet of these cyber vans. And what they could do is then rent them out for a low price to do things like deliveries. 
to go to Lowe's or Home Depot or something and pick up a load of things and autonomously drive it to somebody's house where they can then unload it. Uh, you could undercut the cost of doing all of these types of deliveries or courier services or anything with an actual human being involved by simply having an autonomously driven van that's working like that. So, you know, if you had a, a fleet of those, if you bought like a hundred of them and started working your way out from an urban environment or a suburban environment and just started building out, you could create something that would effectively compete with the big boys and allow small retailers or sellers or inventors or people who are producing things to be able to ship their items at a similar cost to what these big companies do. And I think that that would be huge. That would be a real game changer in terms of the way that people are able to enter into a business that oftentimes has such a high barrier of entry that they can't actually get into it just because of delivery costs. So that's a huge thing also. One other interesting little aspect is you, because of the fact that it's a stainless steel type of material, you could potentially put logos or even have a swap outable logos or something like that. You could even rent out your cyber vans for logo things because what you could have is a magnetized logo that would stick right on the side of this thing that you could then peel off at any point and put another one on. So you could almost rent out the cyber van to different companies and they could put like, you know, Bob's painting or something like that on the side and on the back. And then they could, um, go from that to having somebody's delivery service or something, right? So you could actually, with a fleet of, of vans like this, you could actually allow people to pretend like they own it for a period of time, again, for a fee. So all of these things are really interesting ways of kind of disrupting the status quo of vans and utility vans. I know utility vans are not the most sexy things in the world, but they are highly used. There's a huge industry behind them. There's a huge need for them. And Tesla could actually go in and fulfill a need. And, uh, you know, if it's a multi-billion dollar kind of niche in the market, they don't have to take that much to have a very, very profitable wing of their business. And the fact that they could basically just repurpose a Cybertruck into a somewhat different shape and just roll on with it makes it, it seems like a really, really big no-brainer. Now, they do need to get on it because I hear that GM has been talking about, I think it's supposed to be end of 2021, they're talking about releasing a uh, electric van. So that probably wouldn't have the autonomy part of it in it, but at least it would be electric, which would involve a bunch of other positives for them. We'll see if GM does it. I mean, good for them if they do. If they can come out first, that's fantastic. I don't know. <laughs> There's been a lot of promises from other car companies and not an awful lot of delivery. But in any case, it should be putting pressure on Tesla to think about doing something like a cyber van and really, you know, nailing that down in addition to the cyber truck. So then they would have sedans, regular cars, SUVs, sports cars, trucks, light trucks, and also a van, a delivery type van or something. That really starts, oh, and then of course the, the semi. <laughs> so, so that would put Tesla in line with pretty much having all of the major categories of automotive transport that is going on right now. And I think that would put them in a massively, massively competitive stance with all of these other companies. So I say, they should definitely go for it. Hopefully they're already thinking about that and I'm sure they have much better designs than my, you know, spending a couple of hours tooling around with Maya did. But anyway, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely mash the thumbs up button and subscribe and for sure ask more questions in the comments or at my email address, which is knows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.